Hey Michael, so today we're going to be chatting about tracking on MyFitnessPal. By now, you guys should have watched the first video and worked out your calories and inputted them onto MyFitnessPal, okay? So something you guys need to know is in order for a food to contain calories, it needs to contain macronutrients, which is why you will see when we start playing around on MyFitnessPal that every single food item contains certain macros, right? Most of them are going to contain some amount or portion of protein, carbs, or fat. Foods also contain micronutrients, and this basically refers to all the vitamins and minerals, etc., that we find in certain foods. I want you guys to think of calories like baking a cake. Your protein, carbs, and fat is the ingredients for the recipe that you need for the finished product, which is the calories or the cake. So we're going to go through all the methods today that you guys can use to input foods into your food diary on my fitness pile we're going to be starting with the barcode scanner so let's grab some food items and we will scan some barcodes together okay so the first method we're going to be starting with today is the barcode scanner for this i'm going to be scanning cereals literally my favorite thing in the world and the barcode scanner is a nice and convenient way for us to kind of compare calories in some foods to calories in others okay so to get to our barcode scanner you will see here on my diary it shows um, my calories in like meals so I can separate my meals up it says meal one two three four and five you guys can go into your settings and change this to whatever you like um, maybe you could change it to like breakfast lunch dinner snack or breakfast snack 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 dinner or meal one two three meal one two seven whatever it is that you prefer okay so for this I'm just going to go to one and say add food and then you'll see an option there that says scan a barcode okay so we're just going to click on that one go to a cereal and we're gonna find the barcode on the cereal, I think this one is underneath. Scan it and you'll see here it tells us 100 grams of Rice Krispies is 355 calories. Generally most people aren't going to be having 100 gram servings, so I'm just gonna change this to more of like a reasonable, reasonable serving amount. So we're gonna change the serving size to one gram and then change the number of servings to let's just say 50 grams, right? So it's like half of uh, what it initially scanned and you'll see now it comes to 178 calories per 50 gram serving okay let's go on to the next one let's do OTs as an example for the next one I also love OTs Cocoa Pops are still my fave though okay so scanning the barcode of this one and you can see here it's giving us immediately a 40 gram serving size so we're now going to change that serving size again to one gram number of servings to 50 grams and the reason I'm doing this is because I want us to be able to make an equal comparison of the different cereals based on the correct serving sizes, right? For the last one, let's do my absolute fave. Shout out to Kellogg's. This is the best cereal. Um, I think we have like seven boxes of this in the cupboard at the moment. So scan the box of the Cocoa Pops. And again, this one shot out 100 gram serving. We're gonna change this to 50 grams again. Whoops, that's not 50. Okay, so from this, we can see that the OTs are the lowest in calories at 174. Rice Krispies aren't really far behind at 178. And then Cocoa Pops, unfortunately, are the, the highest ones. So the reason I love the barcode scanner is because it makes it super, super easy for us to compare the calories in different food items. So, you know, if we had to go through all the cereals in your cupboard, you would very easily be able to say, would I be able and willing to swap out something like a Cocoa Pops for maybe a box of Rice Krispies or a serving of Rice Krispies and save myself those couple extra calories or use the calories somewhere else. Okay, so to finish off on the scanner, this is a very, very easy way to just not only learn about the calories in different foods instead of searching for them, which we'll get to just now, but also if you go to like a supermarket like Woolworths, for example, and you buy any kind of convenience or pre-made food packet, you would very easily be able to scan the barcode, put in the correct serving size. Remember, by the correct serving size, I mean the size that you're actually going to be consuming, and then just log it for there into your diary for the day, which makes it very, very easy for us to track. 
Okay, so the next method we're going to be doing is just going to be searching for a food item. Now, obviously there are many food products in the world that aren't going to come with a barcode. So for example, fresh fruit and veg, some like raw meat options, you're not always going to have a barcode available for that. So let's just go in and try and search for a food product and see what comes up, right? So I'm going to go with potatoes, like usually um, some packets of potatoes do have a barcode for potatoes in, but this is just a super easy one for us to search for. So we can just write potatoes into there, right? You will see when you search for a food product that sometimes there is a little verified tick next to it. That is great for us. That means that this product is more or less verified based on the amount of calories it has. So you will see here that it says one grams of potatoes, uh, one serving, one calorie. Cool. Okay, so what I want you guys to know is when you search for an item, always actually try to weigh out the quantity of the food that you're searching for and having. So that means if you search for a potato and it gives us an example of a serving size that says one cup or one bowl or one packet or one medium, we don't actually know more or less how big that cup or bowl or packet was, right? So you want to actually weigh the potatoes that you're having and then we go change the quantity when we log. So we can change the serving size or keep it as one gram and then change the number of servings to the amount that we're actually having. So I'm going to say that my number of servings is 200. Obviously, that means I'm having 200 grams of potato and then tick that in. So you can use the search item for many food products. As I said, fruits and veg. Also, if you are maybe eating out or you buy some sweets or whatever the case is and you don't, they don't have a barcode on, you can just search for a similar option. You're also going to find yourself in a situation sometimes where let's say you buy um, beef fillet and you search for a beef fillet, but 700 search results come up and maybe there isn't a verified option on there. What I want you guys to do in that situation is just go with the average. If it says, for example, uh, 100 grams of beef fillet is 200 calories and the other one says 100 grams of beef fillet is 100 and the other one says 300 just go for an average of most of them so choose an average around the ones that you think are the most accurate and just go with that if for example you have a food product that you don't know what to search for so for example Vickers and I love eating the vampire teeth sweets right I don't really know that if I search for vampire tea sweets that I'm going to actually find it. I mean, I can try, but if it doesn't come up, then just search for another sweet alternative that you know is close. So maybe it could be like wine gums or I don't know, those like yogurt sweets or something might be pretty close or whatever. As long as you're logging something, it's not like you're going to be eating that specific food all the time. So in that case, we just want to have an average. Okay, so last thing I want you guys to remember about tracking or searching for a food item if there is something that you absolutely can't find um, something to log for it that doesn't mean that that food is all of a sudden off limits right you can still have something even though you can't find it on my fitness pal try to log an alternative wherever possible but even if it's not perfect we just move on we keep going tomorrow we track again as usual so for the next thing we're going to be doing is I'm going to show you guys how I log a recipe on my fitness pal. So this is also quite an important one. If you live like with your family or whatever the case is, I'm sure you guys have a general stash of recipes that you like using throughout the week or whatever. By, lo sp by spending some time logging some recipes in my fitness pal, it's going to make it much easier for you to pull those into your diary whenever you have them. Okay, so let's go back into my fitness pile again. And we are going to uh, create a recipe together, right? Okay, so for this recipe, we're going to start by going to more. So I like to do it from here. We're going to go my meals, recipes, and food. And then you can see here that I have loads of recipes. These are probably all ones that I've um, really posted on Instagram and Facebook on my page but from the bottom here we're just going to go to create a recipe from here you can see it says add from the web or enter ingredients manually personally I've never actually tried to create or add ingredients from the web but you are welcome to give it a go and let me know how it goes okay so I don't really have a recipe to create right now but I've grabbed some ingredients out of the cupboard and we are going to pretend that this these ingredients are going to make us a chocolate mousse. It's not, probably not, but it doesn't matter, okay? 
You can obviously create a recipe for anything. If you make like a chicken ala king at home or a butter chicken or a cake or a mug cake or baked oats or whatever, you can create your recipe in here. Okay, the next thing you're gonna see is it says, servings serves how many people? Most of the time, let's say you cook like mince or butter chicken or a curry and you're actually logging the stuff as you go, you're not going to know yet how many servings it's going to make. So in that situation, we're just going to change the servings or log the servings as one serving. Then we're gonna put all the ingredients in and then we'll change the serving size or the servings again at the end. Okay, so by add ingredients, I literally just go and I scan everything in. So we're gonna scan the cocoa powder and I'm just gonna put like random quantities in. Obviously you guys need to put the quantities from the recipe that you're actually making, right? Don't log 100 grams of chicken, but you're using 400 grams of chicken. That's obviously going to influence the recipe and the calories quite a bit. Okay, um, the next one, I'm gonna just log some almond milk. 200 mils of almond milk, that's cool. And then I have this um, reduced sugar instant pudding. So we're gonna put that into our recipe. And here it's under 20 grams, that's cool. And then the last ingredient is I'm just gonna put in some flour. Uh, 150 grams, don't follow this recipe. It's not going to make anything. And if it does, it's probably gonna be terrible. Okay, so you can see here, the calories for the whole recipe is 638, right? Then you can click the arrow at the top right and it's gonna tell you the calories, fat, carbs, and protein of this whole recipe. Then we can go and change the serving amount to however many servings it makes. From there, you can now see nutritional facts per one serving, the calories are 106, total fat 1.1 grams, total carbs 5.1, total protein 1.4. Cool, now we save the recipe. Now, whenever we have this recipe, we can put this recipe back into our diary. So if we go to the diary, um, I think I was working from next week. So I'm gonna just go to meals three. I'm gonna say my recipes, chocolate mousse, and I'm gonna put in one serving of the chocolate mousse. So you can see from here just how simple it is to just add a recipe in. For example, let's say if I wanted to have a baked oats, uh, one of my baked oats recipes for, for breakfast, I could go down here. I have quite a lot of recipes in here. So let's go with Oreo baked oats. I easily know what that recipe is. Maybe you have like a recipe book with all your recipes stashed and then I just bring that into my diary and that's immediately logged for the day. So this is also a great, great way to log easily. Okay, we're almost there guys. So the next one I wanna go over with you guys is creating meals, okay? So this is also a super easy and a convenient way to log in my fitness pile. So going back to your diary, let's just go add food and I'm gonna to go to the second tab that says my meals. Okay, from here you can see I have a lot of meals that are already stored in here, Biscoff oat cake, banana bread, chocolate chip baked oats. So this is also a nice easy way, like a recipe, to just have stored meals in my fitness pile that you can just bring back into your diary. Okay, so let's quickly go to a meal. I'm gonna to go to this one that says, let's do ostrich, pumpkin, broccoli, cauliflower, and cheese sauce. This is like one of my favorite things to have for dinner because it's just so simple and I just love cheese sauce so much. Okay, so if you go here, you can immediately see ostrich steak burgers from Clay & Carew, 200 grams, broccoli and cauliflower, pumpkin, uh, Ina Palmer's reduced fat cheese sauce. That is like my all-time favorite cheese sauce ever. So you can immediately just go there, press the little tick, and that immediately brings it into your diary. So if you go and store a lot of meals beforehand, it's going to make it much easier for you to track. So you can go and store some breakfast, some lunch options, some dinner options, and then you'll be able to pretty much plan out your whole diary for the week, which is gonna make it much easier and more convenient for you. Okay, so the last thing that I wanna show you guys is just how to copy and paste your diary from one day to another day, which also just makes our lives so, so, so much easier, right? Okay, so at the bottom, 
left, the top left of your, your uh, My Fitness Pal. We're going to go to edit and you can see from here that you can just say select all. Okay, so this pretty much takes everything that we've logged for the day and we can copy and paste it to another day. Obviously, I have some very random things in here. I mean, we were scanning barcodes of stuff and I had like potato and like a chocolate mousse. So it's probably not a very balanced day of dieting with the quantity of cereal that I had for breakfast and then baked oats like there's not too much vegetables happening here but it's all good okay so we're going to copy it and then we're going to say same meals or meal or meals to Wednesday the 20th of April now if I go to Wednesday on this diary you will immediately see that everything that I logged on Monday is now in on my diary on Wednesday which means that if you basically wanted to eat the same thing for Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday and then something different on Thursday, Friday, Saturday or whatever the case is, it would be very easy for you to just copy and paste meals from one day to another. Okay, so we've obviously had a really, really random week of vlogging. I'm just going to copy and paste this to um, every day for this week that I'm logging because I want to show you guys how to look at your nutrition for the week. So select all, copy and paste to Friday. So you guys obviously don't have to, <laughs> to eat um, the same things every single day. This is just to kind of show you what it will look like um, at the end of the week when we go and actually look at all the nutrition for the week. So edit, select all, copy, we need it for Saturday. And then edit, select all, copy, and we need it for Sunday. Okay, so now everything, we have something logged for every day this week. You can see that every day this week, we actually had a little bit calories left over, 175. So it's not the end of the world. This is obviously just an example. So if we scroll down to the bottom of your diary, right, and we go to nutrition, we will be able to see kind of where we were at for the week. Okay, so let's go to, if you go to nutrition, you want to just say week view. This is obviously going to tell us uh, kind of what's kind of happened over the past week if we go to calories So this is the most most or one of the most important parts. So you can see here. It says Net calories under weekly goal 1222 your net average was 1564 so basically it doesn't matter how you track for the week You can have some days that are a little bit higher some days that are a little bit lower all your days the same whatever the case is We just don't really want to have net calories over the weekly goal if our focus is fat loss, we obviously want to stay within our calorie range. So for me, I would either have to hit that 1739 or at least have an average of, of just slightly under that. Remember, we don't want to reduce calories too much because then it's too restrictive and not sustainable. But if we're hitting the calories or having just slightly less, then that is cool. If we go to nutrients, we can see here the average protein for the week was 88 grams. We're actually trying to reach for 109 grams. So in terms of protein, this actually wasn't a great week. Obviously, the foods that we've logged this week have all been a little bit all over the place. They're not actually fixed meals. But as I said, this is just an example. OK, saturated fat was low, which was good. We don't really want to have too much saturated fat. Sodium was also low, which was obviously great. That means not holding on to a lot of water retention, which is good. Cholesterol's low. So all in all, it's a pretty good week of logging. So ultimately, MyFitnessPal can be really, really user friendly and you can really make it work for you if you know how to use it. So make sure that you use these shortcuts when you are logging, like creating the recipes, creating the meals, um, copying and pasting your log from one day to another day, which can really just make it so, so, so much easier for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you have learned how to track on MyFitnessPal like a pro and I will definitely see you at the next one.